this week on an all new episode of Tomboy T Rod. We are running a burlesque nightclub. It's showtime. Uh oh. I just checked our accounts and it looks like the Flying 40s is in the red again for the third month in a row. Oh no. We'll be bankrupt again soon. Damn it. We shouldn't have bought this business from Cher. Why do we even believe in her? Ah, no wonder she's selling it for so cheap. I told you so. Didn't she star in a movie about burlesque with Christina Aguilera and it tanked? Cheat up! The genie is still in the butter! We've got this! My dear, we don't even have a headlining burlesque act now. She's run off to join Cirque du Soleil in case you've forgotten. Damn it, I shall just listen to my mother and study accounting instead of running to join the showbiz and become a broke artist. Guys, some optimism here. After all, we are the funny woman of Tomboy t Rod. Not tirade or t ray but t Rod. the way we like to say it. And so what brilliant idea do you have now, Raven? And don't suggest we do that dapper tomboy's tap dance again? It didn't go too well when we premiered our act last night. You know what? We were wearing our suits and that's too much clothing. Maybe we can strip down to just a bikini, bow tie and dancing suits. Be more sexy. I don't know about that, Joanna. What if we all catch a cool from the draught on stage? The air conditioning has broken down as we just can't afford to pay our bills. <sighs> on top of everything else, uh... Hear me out guys, we don't have to strip! Uh-uh! I found a new replacement and she's coming over to audition in a few minutes. Really? How can we afford her? We can barely pay our rent as it is. She's an international star in the Bures circuit and we can sell the tickets to her show. That's how we'll make the moolah. Speaking of rent, is that our landlady? Hey, hush everyone. Keep your voices down. Raven. Raven. I heard you, tomboys. Where is my rent? Open the door now. Uh, sorry guys, it's my audition. I need to pick this call. Hey, Suki, are you here? All right, just one minute away. That's awesome. Can you come around to the back door and stay? See you soon. Hey, be patient. We will be out in a jiffy with your stupid rent money. Crap. The last thing we want is for the landlady to run into an auditionee and hire her instead. It's so competitive in LA. Oh, and I have just the gadget to stop that. Oh my god, it's a grenade. Get that away from me now. Are you insane, purses? I don't want to die yet. There's so much on my bucket list. Not when I have yet to watch the season finale of Game of Thrones. Don't be silly, guys. Look. This grenade is painted in the colours of the rainbow. It's a glitter grenade, see? It only explodes sparkles and glitters. It's so PG-13. Yeah, but um, is it safe? Don't worry, Joanna. You will be fine. Just all sparkly, sparkly, glitter, glitter. But who is going to throw that grenade, though? Not me. I'm not volunteering myself as a tribute again. Fine, we all go through the back door now. Hi, are you the tomboys? She saw us. Now, Percy's now. Uh, all right. Uh, sorry, madam. We have to do this. Wait, do what? Stop, guys. This is not our. <coughs> 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 than a supermassive black hole. Introducing Asia's biggest and only all-female English comedy chat podcast. Welcome to Tomboy T-Rod. Aha! 
got you! Ow! Get off me! Stop, you morons! That's Suki and she's auditioning for us! That's not our landlady! Oh! Oh no, we are so sorry, Suki. Let go of her now, city and purses! Oops, so sorry. We got a bit carried away there. A burglar who is stealing our costumes and all, so, so we had noises at the bag and we thought that you were her and then we're, you know, nothing leads to another and then we are so, so sorry. Really, really sorry about this. Well, you just told me to come to the back door. What's with all this glitter? Ah, it's sticking to me and I just dyed my hair. Oh, what a waste of good glitter grenade, people. Oh. Um, um, that, that is part of the headlining act. Uh, we thought it, it's a good idea for you to look the part when you audition, you see. You look fabulous with all those frackers, doesn't she? City, take my other grenade and throw it at the landlady to get rid of her. Okay, got it? That's a great idea, but but why me? Because the three of us need to conduct this interview. Go now, city! <sighs> why do these guys always pick on poor old me? So, yeah, we heard so many good things about you, Suki. Can't wait to see your act. Welcome to the show, Suki! Yeah! That's right! We have our very own Dita Fontis and she's Suki Singapura, Singapore's first ever burlesque artist. Since debuting in 2011, she has become one of the most talked about and in-demand burlesque artists in the world. Uh, in 2015, Suki was awarded the ultimate burlesque accolade, an invitation to perform at the Burlesque Hall of Fame for being a mover, shaker and innovator in the world of burlesque. Yeah, Suki is known for her lavish and elaborate performances and costumes, which she intertwines with the unique Asian influence style. Her gowns and corsets are not only designed by the artist herself, but each piece is encrusted with over 20,000 hand-placed Swarovski crystals. Woohoo! antique lace, and extravagant jewellery which adorn her breathtaking 17.5-inch corseted silhouette. Have you ever got robbed, Suki? <laughs> <laughs> to, to find out more about Suki and her upcoming performance, check out her website at sukisingapora.com. Go and like her on Facebook and follow her on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, so what is burlesque all about? Tell us about it. Yeah, sure. So um, basically, burlesque is a very ancient um, art form. It originated from 16th century Italian theatre. And it's a form of striptease. Um, it doesn't have to include striptease, but the tra- in the traditional sense, it does. Um, it's a dance parody which was used to poke fun at highbrow society. Um, so basically, it's a very classic, sensual art form. Um, mostly performed by women, but there are boylesque performers. And it involves a lot of, um, vintage costuming, costuming like corsetry, um, long opera gloves, um, stockings. And, um, in part of the routines, the, the aim is to, uh, tease the audience, but never reveal. And, um, so when you have, like you said, there are also male performers, right? Do the male and females perform together? Uh, yeah, together. Okay. I understood. Yeah, well, they can perform. <laughs> <laughs> they can perform together. I it was <laughs> yep. Say no, no more. She Say no more. Cats. I, un- uh-huh. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so since we're so fascinated by your costumes, can you tell us about, you know, um, the, the, the garb and all the, 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 the refineries that you wear for your performances because, you know, um, like I mentioned just now, there's just such an awful amount of detail that goes into all the costumes uh, for a burlesque show. What's it like to wear a corset? Because, you know, uh, it's something that it it really hems you in. Um, does it cause you any physical pain or do you get used to it? 
Starting with the kind of amount of details on the corsets, um, every piece I design myself and I hand embroider in Swarovski myself. So some of my most extravagant acts, for example, that take uh, it can take years in the making for me to conceptualize and then work with designers and myself to create these pieces, I will have hand Swarovskied 20,000 Swarovski crystals on these corsets. Um, so they are, obs- wow. yeah, they're a massive feat of love. Um, not only that, but I really like to, um, change the face of burlesque. Yes, it's about corsetry and the vintage look, but I also like to tie in my, um, Indian Asian heritage. And so I think it's really important to add a um, brown face, a woman of color oh. in the burlesque industry. And I take that very seriously. So in all my corsetry, I like to weave in antique saris that my mother used to wear or, you know, from the Kerala where my oh. grandparents are from, because I think that's really important <laughs> as well. In terms of the actual corsets, oh. yes, they are steel boned and they cinch. Um, my smallest corset is actually 17.5 oh. inches which is smaller than my head. Um, and oh. I've heard the smallest in the industry, I believe. Um, so yeah, that, that took a lot of getting used to it. It took five years to reduce my waist by those inches, but it doesn't hurt. It's, um, just like getting a very, uh, squishy so, back so you, hug. Oh <laughs> so you have a waist that is, that is 17.5 inches? Short of actually getting, you know, grizzled by an actual bear, right? <laughs> Wow. But wow. how do you train your ways like for so long? I mean, do you eat and drink in a corset or do you just stick it I don't think you can eat uh, while wearing a corset, can you? <laughs> so when I started waist training, which is what you, you call it, and it's it's a form of tight lacing as well. Um, basically, I used to wear it kind of six hours a day um, for the first couple of years. And that just got my use, ribs used to kind of getting into the shape of the corset. Um, yeah, got them kind of flexy without sounding too gross. Um, but, um, now I only wear it a couple of, a couple of days a week, but you still ha- kind of have to maintain it. Um, it causes no permanent damage. That's a myth. So if you stop wearing a corset, your waist kind of naturally gravitates back to its normal size and shape. Can you breathe properly while you're wearing a corset? I can breathe, but like you don't want to end up running for a bus. There was this one time that I was, <laughs> I was missing a bus, um, from the campus and I decided to, to run to see whether I could get on it. And I was wearing a corset. I think I must have been 18 inch corset, an 18, 19 inch corset. So not the smallest. And I'm like starting to run. I'm like, brilliant. And then I thought, Oh no, I've got no lung capacity. And then I passed out. <laughs> <laughs> In a corset, that would be quite funny when you get to hospital. Give me an oxygen you know tank. What? I think it's like the <laughs> yeah. most elegant faint anyone ever saw. I was like full on opera. <laughs> When you were invited to the Buckingham Palace, like what what is the whole experience like? What is it like to have tea with the royals for one? It was crazy. When the email came through, I was actually performing in Tokyo at the time. And I honestly thought, no, nah, Buckingham Palace, this is a this is a spam email. And I deleted it because I thought, you know, <laughs> the Queen of England's gonna do something like send it out, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> they should have had to send an email. Yeah. And then I got the phone call yeah. from the What? Yeah. <laughs> And then I got the phone call from the Asian Women of Achievement Awards, which is how I was um, given that honor and invited. And they were like, um, Suki, have you replied to your email? And I'm like, oh my God. So I kind of like grabbed it out of my trash. And I was like, yes, absolutely. I accept the invitation to go to Buckingham Palace. This is the problem with all the Nigerian princes. You know, they keep writing us all these emails. And then when an actual royalty writes you... You don't take um, it seriously. Yeah. Should, we, you know I mean? should we hashtag that burlesque problems? <laughs> <laughs> you know, acknowledged as burlesque being something serious, uh, a form of women empowerment. You know, an art taken seriously as an art form was something that was a huge honor for me because burlesque is an empowering um, tool for women. That's not a cliche. It absolutely has the ability to. Um, allow women to take control of their sexuality, their sensuality, and their body confidence. So just that being acknowledged was extremely overwhelming. But then the fact that I was the first Singaporean woman to do it, and then I'd been invited to Buckingham Palace as the first burlesque artist. So it was really, really emotional, really overwhelming, and super surreal. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. What do they serve? Like, do they serve you? This is my favorite question anyone has ever asked me. Honestly, let me talk to you about <laughs> British baked goods. <laughs> so, <laughs> Buckingham Palace has its own royal bakery, and the Queen has her own like <laughs> what can only be described as own um, Danish pastry section. And my God, <laughs> her Danish pastries. <laughs> Are to die for, and the tea, like the actual tea, is exquisite. Yeah, it was good. I was all about the baked goods. I, I was being shown around by master of the royal household, and he was talking to me about my art. And then they kind of like brought out on like silver plates these baked goods, and I honestly did that thing where I'm like, oh, two seconds, baked goods, <laughs> just <laughs> gravitating towards yeah, the gravitating towards the trays i'll take this up in two seconds after i uh taste some of the queen's uh croissants <laughs> you had a taste of the queen's croissants mm, mm, mm. that is not an innuendo <laughs> wow <laughs> so how did you um you know like what's a typical performance by you like um, sure. Well, actually, it surprises most people that a typical burlesque routine is no longer normally than five minutes, five to eight minutes. The burlesque call of stand- fame standard is actually four minutes um, because there are elements of striptease and you kind of don't want to be watching somebody remove their glove for 10 minutes um because that is a slow slow situation so yeah (laughs) it is about the tease but um yeah it's shorter than most people expect um my productions my stage acts are known for being super elaborate um and pretty punchy and sassy i usually have a backing dancer troupe which i've taught myself of local performers which is fantastic because i believe in um building up the burlesque scene in asia um so i make sure that when i'm performing with backing dancers it's really important to me to you know um inspire and give roles to other young asian women who are interested in burlesque um so they're, yeah, a huge production. And as I say, my signature act, um, which, um, I brought out last year headlining, uh, the Singapore F1 after parties, um, was my performance inside a giant diamond ring. And the diamond is filled with champagne and the whole diamond ring part lights up. And I bathe in the champagne in the center of that diamond on top. So it's pretty extravagant. Wow. Wow. Has anybody come up to you to lift the champagne off of you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would like karate chop their face. In the um, but actually what, yeah. what did happen, which I thought was so romantic, because 80% of my audiences are actually women, um, which is another thing that shocks people. And mm-hmm. aside from that, a lot of couples come to see my show. And the most romantic thing that happened was I was doing a show at the Café de Paris in London and right in the middle of my act, a guy gets down on his knee in front of the world's largest diamond ring, of course, and proposed to his girlfriend in the middle of my act. Wow. wow. <laughs> First of all, I was like, wow, guys, that's so romantic. And then I was like, thanks for upstaging me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this big diamond ring here. Mine's bigger. <laughs> so, uh, so, Suki, so what is the audience response to your fir- performance normally? Do, do you face any opposition from your family? Um, the audience response is amazing. Um, yeah, it's been so incredible, especially, um, young girls coming up to me after my performance and just saying, not only were the acts phenomenal, but thank you for inspiring me to be a strong woman and a female artist and be successful in that because the stereotypes do exist, like, of, um, being a doctor or a lawyer I know like my family were super keen for me to do the sciences and that still happens um it's it's something that you know is is a problem and so a lot of my audience reaction is just it's so incredible to see a strong Asian woman um doing so well or doing like incredible groundbreaking things or boundary pushing things within the arts. So that's really awesome and has been super humbling. And I literally get like hundreds of emails, no no joke, um, a week from women around the world, especially Asian women, um, just telling me how much they've been they've been inspired to like set up their own company or decide to go into fashion or decide to become a burlesque artist or decide to become a designer, which is incredible um 
So that's been amazing. Um, yeah, my family still ask me every so often, when are you going to get a proper job? <laughs> Even though I've been invited to Buckingham Palace, but you know what they're like. <laughs> family is family, right? <laughs> I know, right? How long does it take to knock out one person? Knock out? Who? We're knocking this ballast thing straight out of the park, right, guys? Let's get on with the news highlights of the day. Okay, Joanna. It's the Olympic season, guys, but you know what? Unlike the London and Beijing Olympics, I'm totally not feeling it. What's going on? Back in 2009, people were excited because Rio will become the first South American city to host the Summer Olympics. Now, Brazil can't even make it past the group stage of the recent Copa American Centenario. Can Neymar save Brazil's soccer from more humiliation in the Olympics? Yep, one wonders. And with the polluted one water- hit wonder. <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing. Yes, and why polluted water and security issues have already made things tough for anyone who would be a visitor there. Now, Brazil is on the front line of a mosquito-borne Zika virus epidemic. Virus carrying bugs attacking people in the city, hosting a sports mega event sounds like a Hollywood blockbuster plotline. <laughs> will those pesky mosquitoes be snuffed out or will they have a field day feasting on everyone out there? Yet another top golfer has decided not to participate in the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. Jordan Spieth announced Monday that he will not be representing the U.S. at the Summer Olympics because of concerns over the Zika virus, a problem that has prompted other top athletes to stay away from the game. Which should be done to spur more interest in the Hunger Games. Sorry, I mean the Rio Olympics. Golf is making its debut, but already top players like Adam Scott and Rory McRoy has bailed out. Maybe we need a new sport to spice things up, since we already have the rhythmic gymnastics and synchronized swimming. Should we make burlesque dancing part of the Summer Olympics? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, interesting question there. How do you know that like, roughly how many burlesque um, um, performers are there in the world? Like, yeah, a, a ridiculous number. There's a couple of. Couple of hundreds in each country, um, couple of, uh, city, sorry, and a couple of thousand in each country, especially in Australia. It's huge in Australia. So it would be okay to have a burlesque competition, right, in the Olympics. <laughs> Yeah, it's enough. There's actually the Burlesque Hall of Fame, as you guys know, um, which is the biggest burlesque um, competition for um, Miss Exotic World in the in the world. Um, but yeah, they should absolutely do that for the Olympics. I mean, the preparation required for my routines is uh, I, I go to the gym about five days a week just to keep up with the stamina of performing so many shows so many shows per month um so it's serious <laughs> yeah it's serious it's serious it's a serious workout isn't it because there's a lot of moves and 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 routines where you have to bend your body keep it flexible nimble it's all about those those quads and those glutes <laughs> and your cores right and your core absolutely so how how do you tell like a, a good burlesque artist from a not so good burlesque artist what are the things that you'll be looking for i'm just trying to find out the rules of the olympics so i need to figure that out <laughs> really it's about posture musicality mm-hmm. and poise you know, so okay. um, posture is really important. You can tell somebody who's um, had training in in dance um, by the way that they hold themselves, they elongate their neck, um, the posture as well, <laughs> and the intonations of their performance needs to be smooth. And the poise, it really is a graceful art, even when you're being sassy. 
it's about the strength of femininity and um yeah musicality make sure that you're dancing on the beat i think it's also because you're always it's a little bit like synchronized swimming and 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 you know as we mentioned rhythmic gymnastics because you, as you said poise is important how you carry yourself how you um you know even even in the feet right because i know um and I know this is a little bit off, but, you know, I have a couple of friends who are in, in Indian classical dance. And it's always amazing to see how even like really heavy girls uh, or heavy boys are able to be really light on their feet. Yeah, despite absolutely. Burlesque isn't about um, being... Um, super skinny or super curvy or having this or that. Bella celebrates all body shapes. Um, mm. You know, there's an incredible curvy burlesque artist like Dirty Martini of New York, um, all the mm. way up until, you know, super felt performers um, that, that I know in um, Sydney. So um, it's about celebrating all body shapes, but the key is no matter what shape, size you are, you can be, you know, you absolutely can be graceful and you absolutely can point your toes. It's not, you know, it's, it's something that we can all do. I think burlesque is about working your best assets, um, whatever those may be, be it curves or be it like a spelt frame or be it um, bigger boobs or possibly a bigger bum, you know, or a smaller one. <laughs> <laughs> that that definitely rules out Taylor Swift then. She does not have a career burlesque. <laughs> no, she could do because she's got fantastic <laughs> legs. So she would kill a stocking <laughs> removal. sign you up we need to know a bit more about you um it's now time for our infamous tira quick fire yes if you're a femme fatale what will be your alter ego name it would be suki singapore as i believe i am a femme fatale <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Suki, have you ever suffered from a wardrobe malfunction on stage before? Oh my gosh, absolutely. There isn't something that hasn't gone wrong at some point in my career. But I think the worst one was trying to move a corset dramatically and the corset wouldn't come off. So that was an interesting <laughs> strip tease. <laughs> PG-13, I hope. PG-13 one, yeah. Okay, uh, misconception about burrest that annoys you the most. Definitely that it's something super sexual and overly raunchy and only for men in tiny clubs annoys me because that is couldn't <laughs> be further from the truth. That's right. So if you can travel back to back uh, in time, which period would you want to perform burlesque in? Oh, I love the current era that I'm performing in because um, it is so much more liberal than it was. But if I had to choose a moment, it would be 1940s in San Francisco performing alongside my idol, Barbara Young. Cool. Okay, next question. Most elaborate costume you have ever worn? The one for my giant diamond ring act, which <laughs> took me... Two years, and the corset is covered in 20,000 hand placed Swarovski crystals, which I placed wow. myself. So heavy. <laughs> How heavy is it? Oh my goodness. I've not weighed it, but honestly, it, I swear that's a cardio in itself. <laughs> okay, last question. One beauty product that you can't do without lipstick. Even if I've got nothing else on my face, there is no way that I cannot leave a destination without some rouge. <laughs> You're like my mom. I think it's an Indian thing. I don't know. Because like, you know, uh, obviously I'm Indian. But my mom has always been like, you know, she will never leave the house without her lipstick. I mean, like every time I tell her like, mom, what do you always have this thing about your lipsticks? And she's like, 
do you want me to look like so- I just got out of the hospital? Right? You know? you know, it's like instantly repairs a corpse face situation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So brilliant. You are now part of the Flying 40, Suki. So can you start tonight? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, that was quick. Um, yeah, I suppose I can. Okay. Thanks, Suki, for starting at such a short notice. We can't wait to have you on our show. Hey, 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 what's up? What, 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 what have I missed? And you are back, City. What's taking you so long? Well, it was a long story. But good news, I have it all sorted out now. dream big. We could take the show on the road and make it global or something. Cher got nothing on us. Uh, I don't know about that. Cher, Cher will survive even when cockroaches don't. So wait, what's with all that noise? Who are all those thugs? I think they are looking for our land lady. What do you mean? Didn't you change her far, far away by now? Well, you know, it's kind of a big night for us, so I thought I would put our landlady away so she won't disturb us for a while. I mean, how was I to know that she had all these men looking for her? Oh my god, where is she now? Is that why you took such a long time? You didn't hide her in our prop box, did you? Like that big one on stage? Uh, <laughs> um... Don't worry, guys. She is actually in the act. Uh, whoa. I do a solo show here? I don't share the stage with anyone. Just, so you just dance around her or something. It's, it's all part of the kitsch. Bound women and everything. Um, it's not that kind of show, girl. Okay, um, we need to get rid of our landlady ideas. This person has a remote control for the confetti or something. Let's create a diversion. Got it! Just fish it out of her pocket! Quick! Do something! Her men are making their way to the stage! I'll press this for sparkles! Wait, isn't it dangerous to have fireworks on stage? For health and safety? Jeez, Raven, you are blind as a bat! That's sparkless, not sparkles! Oh no, not again! Not another disaster! The wolf is killing in! Run, everyone! That's not part of the act! Get out! our golden goose, when will I ever make enough money to get out of this hellhole and see my kids ever again? That's always next time, Joanna. Well, folks, that's the end of another ridiculous episode of Tomboy T-Rod. Thank you for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher. The show is also available for free streaming on our website where you'll find absolutely the most brilliant stuff on being a funny geek tomboy in space-time today. Check it out at www.tomboy-tarts.com That's right! 
And if you just want to connect with us outside of the show, we are also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr. Just type Tomboy Tarts. And if you have any inquiries about advertising, collaborating, or appearing on this podcast or our blog, all you have to do is just drop us an email at hello at tomboy-tarts.com. That's hello at tomboy-tarts.com. Because we, we are, are everywhere, guys. Everywhere, 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 everywhere,